It's Friday, May 28. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. Director of the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne, says there is evidence that pregnant women are at risk of respiratory illnesses linked to COVID 19. The data also shows that compared to non pregnant women, expectant mothers have a higher risk of developing serious COVID symptoms and require hospitalization and intubation, which often puts the baby and mother at risk, as we said earlier. She says data on the efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines on pregnant women is limited. She explains, however, that pregnant women in high-risk groups should discuss vaccination with their doctors. And for this reason, the WHO Strategic Advisory Group of Experts on Immunization, better known as SAGE, has reviewed the available data on the five vaccines that have received emergency use authorization by the WHO, namely Pfizer, Moderna, Janssen, AstraZeneca, and the Sinopharm vaccines. And the SAGE group deemed that there is not yet enough evidence to recommend COVID-19 vaccines for all pregnant women, but they have recommended that pregnant and lactating women can be offered one of the five WHO authorized COVID-19 vaccines when the benefits of vaccination outweigh the potential risks. Dr. Etienne notes that clinical trials and analysis of COVID-19 vaccines and their link to pregnancy are underway. To assess the safety and the efficacy of COVID vaccines among healthy pregnant women, and that will continue to inform the SAGE group's recommendations. In the meantime, it is very important that pregnant and lactating women keep up the public health measures that we know are effective against the virus. This include wearing masks, maintaining social distance, limiting contact with individuals living outside of their households, and avoiding closed spaces with no ventilation, and indoor gatherings, which are especially important to keep mothers and their babies safe from COVID. We now get the latest COVID-19 summary from the Health and Wellness Ministry. In the clinical summary for Thursday, May 27, 2021, 108 new cases and one new death were reported. A 79-year-old male from St. Anne is the 936th person to succumb to the virus on the island. The new positives were taken from a sample size of 1,672 tests. The three parishes with the highest positives were St. Catherine with 31, St. James with 17, and Kingston and St. Andrew with 16. There are now 48,288 overall cases, with 22,279 being active cases. 175 recoveries were also recorded over that period, with that tally now reaching 24,703. At this time, there are 181 persons hospitalized, with 45 patients moderately ill and 14 said to be critical. Melvin Pennant, PBCJ News. The government has made further changes to the mining lease governing the cockpit country. This was announced by Portfolio Minister Robert Montague as he made his sectoral debate contribution in the House of Representatives on Wednesday. There has been much public outcry from residents and other concerned stakeholders over possible mining in or close to the cockpit country. The ordinary citizen, too many of us, Madam Speaker, claim that we speak on their behalf without consulting them. So I found myself in the cockpit country and spent time listening and I learned a lot. It was unfiltered yet factual. I dutifully reported to the ministry and cabinet and I also consulted with the political representatives. As a result, acting on the advice and direction of the Commissioner of Mines, as the law dictates, remember, we are a country of laws. We have modified SML 173. This change has resulted in approximately 6,000 hectares of land being removed from the original SML, 
but this will be replaced with additional lands to the company with SML 71. And SML 71 is adjacent to the east of where the company is currently mining in SML 165. I will take you there. By replacing what was removed, we have satisfied not only the provisions of the law, but the establishment agreement and the conditions of the license. Minister Montague said Prime Minister Andrew Honus has been definitive in his response to the raised concerns. Madam Speaker, our Prime Minister has led from the front on this matter, and his steadfast and steady hands have created balance between the concerns of the company and our agreement and the demands of the people, and the Prime Minister must be commended. Our Prime Minister took the bold step, Madam Speaker, to define the cockpit country. No other Prime Minister took that action. None. The controversial Bengal mining matter was also addressed by the Minister. Madam Speaker, our listening Prime Minister heard the concerns in St. Anne with regards to the Bengal development. So he has instructed us that we should begin talks with the developers to identify suitable lands with the same or better quality limestone. And we have begun preliminary talks with them. No decision or agreement has been reached, but we have indicated to them our intentions. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang has opened a debate on new provisions in the Criminal Justice Suppression of Criminal Organizations Amendment Act 2021. If approved, people who attempt to derail criminal investigations by falsifying, concealing, destroying, or disposing of documents or items relevant to a probe could face up to 10 years in prison. Dr. Chang was speaking in Parliament on Wednesday. If you are found guilty of these offenses, you could be fined $5 million or experience a maximum sentence of 5 to 10 years if tried in parish or circuit courts, respectively. Clause 14 of the bill, which seeks to amend the Criminal Justice Administration Act to include a Section 39A, introduces the offense of tipping off. And establishes the circumstances within which a person would not have been found to have committed the offense. A person commits the offense if knowing or having reasonable grounds to believe that an investigation is being conducted or about to be conducted in respect of any offense. Under any law, he discloses information relating to the investigation to another person. Discussing the latest statistics from the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Dr. Chang says there are 262 active gangs, a number of which forces underaged Jamaicans into criminal activities. Clause 9's amendment to Section 15 of the Principal Act, Offenses and Penalties. As agreed at the Joint Select Committee, Section 15, Offenses and Penalties, Second Schedule, is amended as Subsection 2 by expanding the list of aggravating factors that should be considered at the point of sentencing a person for the commission of offense under the Act. Some of these aggravating factors include, in an offense under Section 4, which is the offense of recruitment of a child to a criminal organization. According to Dr. Chang, the amendment of the bill will also see changes to the Jamaica Constabulary Act relating to search warrants. Constable Force Act has been consequently, consequentially amended to include a new Section 17A to allow for the application to a Justice of the Peace for a warrant authorizing a search of a building, receptacle, or place specified in the warrant and seizure of any items specified in such warrant. The Constable Force Act is also amended in Section 2 by inserting definitions for the terms conveyance and vessel. In light of their usage in the new Section 17A, it is deemed necessary to define the terms to set the context in which they are intended to be used. It should be noted that the John Slick Committee report prescribed that only a constable name in a warrant could give effect to the warrant. It was subsequently recommended, however, that this limitation be removed as it may pose operational challenges to the work of the JCF. There may be instances where the constable named in the warrant cannot give effect to the warrant. In such a case, the function of the JCF would be hindered. Additionally, it is noted that in practice, the constable is not named in the warrant. 
In light of this, the prescription has been removed from the reformulated provision. The new 17A6 provides that where a constable seizes anything under the section, he shall as soon as reasonable practicable, if satisfied that there is a dispute as to the person lawfully entitled to the possession of the thing, apply to a judge of a parish court for an order under subsection A, subsection 8A or C. The National Security Minister says 61% of annual killings were assessed to be gang-related. Minister Chang says the legislation will provide an additional game-changing tool to the security forces in combating criminal gangs. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett is mourning the passing of tourism stalwart and prominent businessman Ernest Smart, who died Thursday at the age of 88. Smart died in Miami, Florida while receiving treatment in hospital. In a press release, Mr. Bartlett said, quote, Ernie Smart was the quintessential tourism man. He understood the game and had the swagger that created the phenomenon he was during a period when Jamaica was the playground of the rich and famous, end quote. Smart owned and operated a number of tourism enterprises over the years, such as Water Sports Enterprises Limited, Shaw Park Hotel in St. Anne, and Brimmer Hall Great House in St. Mary. He also had investments in tourism businesses in Grand Cayman and served as chairman of the White House, which is a popular restaurant and venue there. We get the latest news concerning tax administration of Jamaica, plus insights from financial coach Dennis Williams, and get our regular market updates in this extended edition of the Business Report with Gabriel Thompson. The Tax Administration Jamaica TAJ says it will open select tax offices on Saturday, May 29, 2021 and every last Saturday of the month for the remainder of the 2021-2022 financial year. In a release, the tax authority said the service enhancement is being implemented to alleviate the usually high walk-in traffic at tax offices during the busy month and weekday period. The following tax offices will operate between the hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. St. Andrew, specifically Constant Spring, Montego Bay, Mandeville, Savannah Lamar, St. Anne's Bay, and Old Harbor. The Portmore Tax Office will continue its usual weekly Saturday operations with adjusted business hours of 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The TAJ has advised that operating times may be subject to adjustments resulting from announced curfew hours in keeping with the Disaster Risk Management Act. Taxpayers will be able to access taxpayer service activities including processing motor vehicle registration and other motor vehicle transactions, applying for a taxpayer registration number TRN, dropping off documents for the renewal of their driver's license, and to make tax and fee payments. Audit and compliance activities will not be available during the Saturday operations. In Thursday's trading session, the JSE combined index declined by 511 points to close at over 423,000 units. Overall, market activity resulted from trading in 91 stocks, of which 42 advanced, 38 declined, and 11 traded firm. The junior market index declined by 33 points to close at over 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for 138 Students Living Jamaica Limited, Access Financial Services Limited, and AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited. Stocks declined for Blue Power Group Limited, CAC 2000 Limited, and Caribbean Assurance Brokers Limited. Trading firm were 1834 Investments Limited, CAC 2009.5% preference shares, and Community and Workers of Jamaica CCU Deferred Share. Future Energy Source Company Limited Ordinary Shares was the volume leader with 4.9 million units, followed by Pulse Investments Limited with 3.1 million units and Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares with 2.2 million units. And in foreign exchange trading for Thursday, May 27, the U.S. dollar sold for an average $149.33. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $125.28. The pound sterling traded for $211.04 and the euro sold for an average $184.12.
Oil prices inched higher on Friday, with Brent holding nearly $70 a barrel as strong U.S. economic data and expectations of a rebound in global demand outweighed concerns about more supply from Iran once sanctions are lifted. Brent crude futures rose 17 cents to settle at $69.37 a barrel. West Texas Intermediate Crude added 38 cents to $67.23 a barrel. In this week's edition of Financially Focused, financial success coach Denise Williams discusses avoiding unscrupulous credit repair claims as part of building your financial success tools. Andrine sold her house to clear off her bank debt, but still ended up owing the bank because of interest and fees, okay? And so the ability to repair credit on her own proved detrimental. Because I also shared in the video, Andreen is living in a really small room in her daughter's home. So that said, before you reach out to a professional credit restoration specialist, you should educate yourself. Even if you don't want to do it, you don't want to go through the paperwork, and you do want support, educate yourself. Okay, so you may, may be asking, you know, what could Andreen have done differently in terms of trying to keep her house? Well, one of the strategies that's really important is what we call a credit freeze. And uh, I learned about a credit freeze um, of course, formally in my training, but when, you know, it became apparent, you know, and let me just go back. So in 2010, my son uh, was born with a host of medical conditions associated with Down syndrome. And I had already had, you know, my, my first son. And so I'm juggling two babies uh, and, you know, just regular day-to-day -day life. And you know, so I'm dealing with all kinds of medical complications and the bills. Then in 2012, I was basically fired from a high paying job because I was working on fumes. I was exhausted and the company felt that I wasn't really a credit to them. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, I was overwhelmed with a sick child, medical bills, bad debt and the daily running of my household. Now, what did I do to give myself breathing room? It is the same thing that Andrine should have done. If she was my, my client, I would have counseled her to get a credit freeze. Very, 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 very critical. So a credit freeze is just one of the many tools that you can do yourself in credit repair and credit restoration to give yourself time to reorganize your debt. Now, critical, critical thing. A credit freeze is not a get out of debt card. This is not you saying, oh, I now have credit freeze. I don't have to pay. Uh -uh, far from that. Credit freeze is a strategy to allow you to pay down what you owe. I want to encourage you because this is something that's huge in other countries that, um, you should be aware that there are a lot of fake promises that's going to get you to say they can get you out of debt. So I want to talk about the signs of a scam because, again, remember, the premise of this conversation we're having is that you can do credit repair yourself. You can sit down go through the raw data that's provided in your credit report. You can sit down and craft the letters. You can, you know, you can just basically do it all by yourself. You need to watch out though for persons who are offering you a guaranteed solution. There's no guaranteed other than you need to pay back the money. That's something that's guaranteed. You bring in credit restoration when you need help because you cannot pay it off right away. But that doesn't mean it's guaranteed the bank is going to agree. It's a negotiation. You have to have the right language. You know, so we don't want persons to feel like, oh, I'm drowning in debt. I'm going to join this guaranteed, guaranteed program. And then the debt's no longer a problem. <laughs> have to pay back what you owe. 
What credit restoration does is provide a strategy and it provides a language. And so a lot of these legal guaranteed persons are saying, look, they'll take care of it for you. No, no, go so. It's no. You need to get your free credit report. And that's where everything starts. Without the credit report, credit restoration, credit repair, whether you pay for help or you do it yourself, nothing happens till you understand where you are. And so I'm really excited that Financially Focused and the Caribbean Credit Repair Association has teamed up to launch the Credit Restoration Professional Training course to empower individuals not only to resolve their own credit matters, but to enter a new profession. It's really, really exciting because the truth is not everybody wants to do the credit repair work themselves. And so communities can benefit from solid guidance to build back their good name. So people in the communities, I mean, can get the guidance. And this is what makes it, you know, very exciting. Now, let me repeat. Credit restoration strategies like a credit freeze do not wipe away your debt, okay? When you are really in need of a credit repair, the first thing you want to do is act immediately. You know, it should be done by you and not by anyone else, okay? And so here is how you can take back your power. Thanks, Denise. For more information on the development of your financial future, head on over to financiallyfocusedmedia.com or find Denise on YouTube at Financially Focused. And on that note, we close this extended edition of the Business Report Inside the News on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. Pleasant viewing. In regional news, secondary school students across the region will have two additional weeks to prepare for their Caribbean Secondary Examination Certificate, CSEC, and Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examinations, CAPE, exams. The exams will commence on Monday, June 28, 2021. The announcement came from CXC Registrar Dr. Wayne Wesley on Wednesday. Terian Brown Campbell of TTT News tells us more. A two-week delay for the start of the CSEC and CAPE examinations. This latest development was announced on Wednesday by the Caribbean Examination Council. Council approved the delay of the sitting of the regional examinations by a further two weeks. This will provide candidates with extra time to prepare for the examinations. The governments of Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Barbados were among the territories to request the deferral. But the majority of the countries in the region indicated their students were ready to take the exam. Minister of Education Nyan Gatsby Dolly, who appeared earlier on TTT's Now Morning Show, said the governing council of CXC met on May 25th to decide. Based on what was discussed yesterday, it seems as though there is going to be um, a postponement in the start of the, CX, of the CXC exams. Um, it should be either two or three weeks. We, are, we have asked for three, but I think it is going to be more in line of two weeks. CXC's register, Dr. Wesley, said the results of the exams are likely to be released sometime between the last week of September and the first week of October 2021. Terry Ann Brown Campbell, TTT News. And in St. Lucia, the National Student Council has come out strongly against all forms of violence. The condemnation follows the shocking discovery of a handgun on a student at a local high school. The Student Council is calling for a robust effort at conflict resolution in the island's schools. A concealed firearm in the possession of a high school student passed through one of the nation's school's gates and into a classroom stoking anxiety among parents, teachers, and students over school safety. Now, one week after the fear-inducing incident, the public relations officer of the St. Lucia National Students' Council, Jean-Luc Constantine, says the details surrounding the matter remain vague. The council is unaware of the details of the incident um, involving the students. 
but we think it pertinent um, to reiterate our point that we do not encourage violence um, amongst our students and within our schools. The National Student Council implores the student population as well as parents and guardians to cultivate peaceful habits among youth to defuse heated situations. Our students need to encourage one another. Our parents need to encourage their children to learn some peaceful means of conflict resolution. Um, we at the council, we see this incident as very frightening. Gun violence has plagued St. Lucia with the recent episodic bout of gunplay, claiming four lives and plunging countless loved ones into mourning with the back-to-back -back double homicides in Jackmill and Denry over Pentecost weekend. We are hoping that the authorities um, take the appropriate measures to not only um, provide some guidance to this young person, but to many others who may stray down the same path as him, or to many others who can be affected by um, actions that by the actions that led to him being where he is now. The recent uptick in violent crime has sparked the predictable debate over crime-fighting strategies and ameliorating the chronic social problems that contribute to the malignant scourge. The Student Council PRO believes that the presence of more societal exemplars and role models in various communities could help dissuade youth from going down the wrong path and entering a life of crime. Sulaj Alfred, HTS News Force. In sports, we look to athletics. The first in the Joint Jamaica Olympic Association, Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association Olympic Destiny Series was staged at the National Stadium in Kingston last Saturday. The meet started at 8.15 a.m. and will was completed shortly before 11 a.m. Uh, there are two more in the Olympic Destiny Series, plus qualifiers for the Paralympic Games to come. According to JOA boss Christopher Samuda, the series was designed to meet all the needs of the athletes as the Tokyo Olympic Games gets closer and closer. He says, quote, we all know the dire consequences of the pandemic and what we said we need to put on a series of meets in order to condition our athletes, both physically and mentally, end quote. The second meet in the series is set for this Saturday, also at the National Stadium. And that's our package. We here at the PBCJ take the time to wish you pleasant viewing and a great weekend.